Architectural Lab Module 2 by Joe Cerrone. Today we're going to take a look at creating this floor plan drawing for Module 2. Alrighty, so here's Module 2 in D2L. And we're going to take a look at the hands on drawing assignment. You can choose either the architectural drawing or the mechanical drawing. Today I'm going to show how to work with the architectural drawing. We're going to start by downloading the title block. Now the drawing looks like this. We can we can go ahead and download this. And so here's our drawing. Back to D2L. Download the B-size architectural title block and open that. And then I'm just going to expand the window here, pan it. And so this is our title block for architectural drawings. If we go here to the top, what we want to do is show the menu bar. And then we want to go over here to our customization. And we pretty much want everything on. And that will allow us to go through and set up some of these running things down here on the bottom we take a look at the drawing, we have an 18 foot by 16 foot floor plan with some furniture in it, basically just a table, six chairs, and then this, um, this other table for snacks and things like that. So as we work with the architectural title block, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by checking the units. If we go format units, you'll notice that we're working in architectural units. And when we work in architectural units, how we input our coordinates is important. And so we'll be inputting our coordinates in feet and inches. The other thing that we do is we draw things in model space. Down here, this is what's called paper space. There's a little right triangle. And then there's a floor plan tab, an elevation tab, and a section tab. And what that allows us to do is to show whatever we draw in model space on these different tabs. So we're going to click on the model space tab and we're going to draw this in model space. We're going to go to tools, drafting settings. We're going to enable snap and grid. The snap is set at six inches. And the grid is set at 12 inches or one foot. We're going to turn polar tracking on. I like these to be set at 15 degrees. Oh snap, we're going to leave. Well, let's turn it on. We'll put it on with these default settings. Endpoints, midpoints, center, quadrant, intersection, extension, tangent, nearest, parent intersection. And I'm going to say OK. If we take a look at the drawing, basically it's we're going to start off by creating this 18 foot by 16 foot rectangular shape. We're on the wall layer. We're going to select line, select the spot to start from, track it to the right, type 18, apostrophe, enter. And then we're going to track north and we're going to go 16 apostrophe, meaning feet. And then we're going to come back this way, 18 feet. And then we can type C for close. If we turn on our line weights, we can see that. It's not exactly in the middle, so I'm going to move it from here to here. Again, I'll repeat the move command. Alrighty, so resuming. So we have created the basic geometry for the walls on this floor plan. And so it's 18 feet by 16 feet. And we draw the objects full size in model space. If I were to click on one of the lines and hover, you can see that that line is 18 feet, zero inches. I click on this line, put a grip on it and hover. I can see that that's 16 feet. 
So as we go through and we draw the objects, we want to learn how to read the blueprints a little bit. And so as we work with architectural drawings, we'll have a dimension style that's these architectural ticks with a dimension style in feet and inches. We'll use a layer for the furniture and we'll draw the furniture on that layer so that we can turn it on and off as we see fit. And then essentially what we'll do is we'll put this door opening here by creating a trimmed line entities at that location. So the wall thickness is six inches. And so what we'll do is we'll offset six inches. I'll hit escape to clear the grips. And then I'll say offset. If you hover over the command, it gives you content sensitive help. In other words, the longer you wait, the more information it gives you. And then you can click on the command and then you can hit F1 and it will take you to the help command. And for some reason, it just doesn't seem to hit right to the right page. So you have to go in here into the search and say offset. And then it tells you how to offset an object or how to use the command where you can, you can say offset. And then if you say through, you can select where you want it to be offset or you can have distance and you can select the line to offset and then you tell it how much. Distance is what we typically use. And so when we say offset, we say distance and distances are our are, are default. And so I'll say six here and I'll hit enter. You don't have to put in the inch mark. Technically it would be six inches. This is how that would be read but the default is inches. And so you could just type six and it'll default to inches. And so once we have that, let me try that one more time, offset, six, enter, and then you'll get a square. And what we do is we click on the line to offset. You can either offset it up or down. Select the line to offset. You can either go to the right or to the left. And we want everything to be offset to the inside. And so we'll offset these different lines to the inside. And then we just hit enter to end the command. And then what we want to do is we want to trim out these corners so that the corners look like they do in the drawing. Trim. And then once we have the trim command, what we do is we click on the parts we want to remove. And so as you hover the mouse, you'll see that you get this X that's showing me what's going to be removed. Pan, pushing the wheel on the mouse. And so we learn to drive it sort of like an Xbox control. And then we can turn the wheel on the mouse, push the wheel on the mouse, zoom and pan, enter. So that's what the outside of the wall looks like. And then what we want to do is we want to have the opening for the door. And so if we go and take a look for that, the door opening is six inches and then three feet, six inches from the inside wall location. So we'll offset this line six, and then we'll also three feet, and then we'll trim. You can zoom, if you hover the mouse over the area you wanna zoom, that will then be in the middle of the screen. So if I hover the mouse over here and then turn the wheel, that becomes centered. Offset. Six is already the default. You can just hit enter. Line side, escape, click on it and just drag it over to the other line. There is an extend command, but you can work with grips more quickly. So I'm just gonna clean that up like that. And then I'm gonna offset that three feet or 36 inches. And there's that other line. And so as you offset lines, you can offset them it'll remember the last distance and it'll just stay in what's called a modal command allowing me to continue to offset things. You can also offset things like arcs and circles and so if we had a circle 
and we wanted to offset that. Let's say we want to offset that two inches. We can then go and select it and then offset concentric circles. Trim, remove the opening for the door. Alrighty. So that's what the basic floor plan looks like. If we wanted to put dimensions on it, what we'll do is we'll switch over to a layer called dimension and then we'll use a linear dimension. And so linear dimension would be a horizontal or a vertical dimension. And you want to use O snap when you work with linear dimensions. And so the way that it works is we go to linear dimension. You want to populate with the dimension layer because this allows us to turn off the dimensions and be able to select what we want to see. And then you want to come back up here to linear and we can go through and we can then go and dimension our door opening. When you create these dimensions, you can click on them and you can move them with a grip. You can move the text. You can center the text and then hit escape. So I'm just going to put a couple of dimensions on here for right now, another linear dimension. When you use dimensions, use O snap. Now we've drawn this on our grid, but from an object snap point, what it will automatically do is grab endpoints, midpoints, centers, whatever it's closest to, it'll try to grab, like, like gravity. And so with endpoints on, we can then come over here and go to linear dimension. As we hover, you can see it's found the endpoint and grabbed it. It has snapped to it or object snapped to it. And then we can place that dimension there. Alrighty, continuing. Let's put in the furniture. So we're going to switch over to the furniture layer and we're going to draw a 72 inch diameter circle. And then we're going to draw or we're going to insert a chair. So to do that, we'll switch over to our layer, furniture, and then the furniture is located in the room seven feet, six inches and seven feet, six inches from the inside edge of the wall. And so as you learn to read the blueprints, what we would do is we would offset this line here, seven feet, six inches down, and then this line, seven feet, six inches over. That's the easiest way to do it. The easiest way to do it is to make construction lines. And so we say offset, and then we type in the amount, seven apostrophe six, enter, and then we can offset that line seven feet, six inches from the inside edge to the left. And then we can do the same from the bottom edge above it. Enter. Draw a circle, center, diameter. Since the dimension is given in diameter, being the people who want to use the computer to figure out our math for us, we want to use diameter rather than radius. Radius would, would force us to create a calculation or to, and so if we say diameter we bring the cursor over to the intersection of where those two lines meet click and then as we move the cursor we type in 72 enter you click on the line and then you measure it you can see the grip measurements give you that value and so that's 36, 36 times two is 72 inches. And that's our diameter. And that's what's great about CAD. That's why I took it because it's so good at doing the math that if you draw it right, then you'll have an accurate model. We're next gonna put in one of these chairs and we're gonna download that from D2L. And so in the D2L section, I have a chair right here. And so I've already drawn it for you. What you can do is you can download it and open it, and what it'll do is it'll open that as a separate drawing file. And we have these chairs in 3D and in 2D. It just depends on which direction you look at them from. And so here's our chair drawing. And then if we were to change the wireframe to conceptual, that's called a visual style. You can look at that. If I pan it, you can pan it. If you hold the control key, and, and push the middle wheel on the mouse, it orbits. And so it's kind of 
kind of like an Xbox there. It's easy to get off of view. And so typically we'll use a standard isometric view. And so I go to the isometric views quite often. We're going to go with a top view of this and just look at the 2D geometry. And so there it looks just like a regular 2D chair. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy it and place it into our other drawing. We're going to say edit, copy with base point, and then, and I, I think we can just copy and paste it as well, but let's start with edit, copy with base point. So you go edit, copy with base point, and you decide where you want that chair to be measured to. And so we want that to be measured to the center of, the, of that part there. And then we'll select the geometry and hit enter. And then we'll switch over to the other drawing. And you can do that by either going up to the window tab and going to our other drawing or you can click on these tabs up here at the top. And then we can say edit, paste. And when I paste that in, I can paste it in as a block. And so I can place that chair right there. Now it came in on a different layer, it came in on layer zero. So I'll click on it and I'll move it to layer furniture and I'll hit escape. And there we go. Now it's on that furniture layer and then what we will do is we can clean up by erasing these other two lines. And then what we'll do is we'll create what's called a polar array. And what a polar array does is it allows us to see the drawing and then to create like a like flowers on a petal. And so it will copy and rotate. And so we have six of these chairs. And so to create the other chairs, what we'll do is we'll select array polar, we'll select our chair, hit enter, and then the center of the array needs to be the center of the table. You can either use an O snap or you can just gravitate to that point using regular snap. We'll click and then the ribbon will populate with the information that it has. And so for right now, we want to populate that with six chairs. And so we have six items and it'll calculate the distance between each one of those. And so it's gone through and calculated that out. You can change it so that the starting angle, like sometimes people will say, well, the chair wasn't in the right spot. And so, you know, is the location and the way that the chairs are laid out important? For this exercise, it's not. But if you are, you know, concerned with that, you can adjust it with these different starting angles and things. Or you could just start by putting the chair at the six o'clock position. So if I click on this and then I delete it, and then if I were to put that chair in again, I can copy it. We'll just try a regular copy and paste. Control C, and then we'll go to our drawing, Control V. Yeah, and it drops right in and I can put it over here and then I can rotate it. It's just a little bit more work. And so I say rotate, select the item to rotate, hit enter where I want to rotate it from. And then I'll just move it to the position that I want using a grip. And then I will go in array it again. And so I'll come back here to the array command. I'm going to say polar array select the object to array hit enter the center of the array will be here and now it looks just like it does in the picture it's a slightly different geometry than that one with the armrests are on the inside but this will be fine it's associative which means that you can update it and so if i wanted seven chairs in here i could say seven and this would be like planning for your wedding guests. How many people can I fit at a table? And how, how, how many tables will I need? And so facilities will use AutoCAD to be able to do things like floor plans and layouts for meetings and conferences. Alrighty, so we'll green check mark that. Our chair is here. We're gonna then draw the table. The table is located four feet from the inside edge, and then it's seven feet and four. And so we're gonna use the offset command and they didn't give us the dimension for the wall, how far it is from the wall. You can put just about whatever you like. I'm going to just offset it two inches from the wall. So let's get started. 
We're going to go to the offset command. We're going to type in four apostrophe for four feet. We'll select this line and this side. Right click, enter. We will repeat the command. You can right click and just say repeat offset. And then we'll change the value from four feet to seven feet. And then we'll offset this. And then what we'll do is we'll come back to the offset command. And it's built to be like right mouse, left mouse. As you start to work with it, I'm going to say two inches. I'll make the table two inches from the wall. And then what I'll do is I will trim it. And so I'll say trim and I'll get rid of this. That one I needed. Trim. It's kind of quicker if you drag them through than it is to try to select them. And then the table is 24 inches from this edge to this edge. So we'll offset 24. And then what we'll do is we'll put a chamfer, a two inch chamfer on each of the corners. So we'll say offset 24. Write it again, offset 24, enter, zoom in this line to this side. And then we'll just trim that. I probably could have given it a little bit more space away from the wall, but it's fine. I'm going to put these lines on the layer for furniture. And so if I click on it and then I select furniture, It'll then move it to that layer. And so I can go and select all of them, put all of them on the furniture layer, and hit Escape. I can chamfer by going here under Fillet to Chamfer. And I will then hit the down arrow to go through the options and set the distance at 2 inches, which is the default. And so I hit Enter and Enter because there's two lines. First line that we chamfer second line that we chamfer. And so this is two inches and two inches. Right click, repeat, and then just get to the corners. Turn the wheel, repeat, repeat. Alrighty, so now we have the chairs, the table, and we just need to add a few more dimensions and we can add the note if we decide to put 72 inch diameter on here. And we'll put this, this is called a multi-liter with a spline on it. And so as we start to work on putting the dimensions on here, what we're gonna do We'll keep it on the screen so we can read the dimensions and we'll use these different dimension commands. We'll go to the dimension layer and then we'll create this four foot, seven foot and four foot. And remember, if you don't have enough room, you can just click on it and just move this one out a little bit and then hit escape. And then we can go and add more dimensions. And so here is a, another linear dimension. We'll zoom in, make sure you use O-snap from this endpoint. And if it doesn't get the endpoints or the snap, turn off the snap and just use object snap. And there's the other one. And so we can go and grab that four inch one, four feet, dimension, endpoint, endpoint, place it. Do they have to be perfect? No. Do we want them to be perfect? Yes. And so as you start to work with it, you can kind of tweak the dimensions so that everything lines up from endpoints to endpoints.
And that's just me being obsessive compulsive. It doesn't necessarily have to, but you know, when you think about it, perfection of the drawings and how things look is important. And that's, that's where the quality comes from as you learn how to create and design things. All right, we're gonna dimension the table at seven feet six, four feet. And so we're gonna just kind of go in here. We're gonna go from here. And if you hover, you can go and get the O snap for, for the center. And there it is. And so I'm gonna go and drop this. And you see, I made the wrong dimension. And this happens all the time. I dimensioned it from the outside of the wall instead of the inside. Now you can just grab the grip and move it. And there it's right. Or you can just do it again. And I just recommend doing it again. You know, as you work with it, you'll get better. And so we'll go from the inside of the wall, hover, swipe, acquire, center, seven feet, six inches. And then we'll pan linear dimension, hover, obtain, select the endpoint. And then, like I say, you can clean these up a little bit if you want to make them nice and neat. You can add that six inch dimension. I'm gonna hit escape to clear the grips. I've got another six inch dimension in a horizontal. Seven feet six for this dimension over here. And like I said, this is what's really nice about CAD is that it remembers the dimensions for you. Back in the day when we had rulers and pencils, you had to keep track of all of your measurements, all of your scales. And there was quite a bit more math involved. Alrighty, so we have most of the dimensions on here. It looks like I've got everything pretty much on there. If I turn off the grid, I can look at it. It looks great. We can add a text note for these other two in a multi-leader. And so to put text on, you hit the A right here. And I'm just gonna use single line text. If we use multi-line text, it's a little bit easier. Single line text is a little bit more accurate. So if I go single line text, and I say down arrow, justify, and I'm gonna say middle center, what that'll allow me to do is to place the middle center of the text wherever I click. And so I'll click right here. It'll be four inches tall, which is fine. I'll hit enter, rotation angle zero. And then I type in 72, quote, D-I-A-M-E-T-E-R, and then enter enter and then I have placed the text on there so that's my 72 inch diameter I can then add the text for 84 L in 24 D over here let's use multi-line text and so we'll say multi-line text and what's nice about it is you cre create it like a, a word window um, and so if you create this little uh, text box you can then go and type in the command 84 capital L enter x enter 24 capital d and it's left justified and this is what's nice about multi-line text is it, it works like a word processor so you can highlight it and then say center it you can bold it if you like you can unbold it italicize underline green check mark and then we'll add a multi-leader for this 2 by 48 or it should be two by 45 is, is what it should read, two by 45 degree chamfer. And so to, to create a multi-leader, it's this little thing right here. And then what we wanna do is we wanna go and click here and then just, that'll be the beginning of the leader. And then you click again. And again, you get three landing spots, one for the arrowhead, one here, and then the next one. And then you type in the command or the, the text two inch chamfer 45 and you can go up here and get the degree symbol 
and then green check mark. Alrighty. So we've got all the drawing geometry on the floor plan drawing. And what we're going to do is we're going to now center it on the title block and set the scale. And so we'll click on the word floor plan here. And then this is our title block. If you double click in the viewport, you can then set and change the magnification. And what I'll do is I'll center it and then I'll set the magnification to a scale that we can measure. And so you can double click outside of the viewport and it'll allow you to make the piece of paper bigger. Double clicking in the viewport is almost like working through a window into model space. And what we'll do is we'll set up a scale by clicking on our scale icon and we'll say a quarter of an inch equals a foot. We can make it a little bit bigger. I like to use up the paper. Uh, so let's see if we can go and make it half. Not quite enough paper for that. And that's what's nice about CAD. Again, you don't have to have everything perfect. Let's just stay with quarter inch equals a foot, even though it's a bit small. And then we'll lock it in place. Now, when we print this out, if we brought this to the facilities department to go and put tables in our room, they can measure things with a, a scale. And so it's scalable. And we would want to record that dimension over here. And so we double click outside and we say our scale here is a quarter of an inch equals a foot. And what that means is a measured quarter of an inch is equal to a foot in real life. And then over here you want to put your name on it. And then you'd want to put the course on it. And then you can also update with the date. And then you can also put the scale in again. Do put the date on. It is important because when you start to work in the field, if you don't put the date on, nobody knows what the latest drawing is. And we could call this I believe it's module two. Alrighty. Save it and then we'll turn this in. So we'll say file, save as, and I'm gonna just save it into my downloads as my initials dash lab 2 and I'll call it 2a. I've already got one in there um, so I'm going to say no and I'm just going to add an x to the end of it. That way I keep track. You don't need to add the x. I've just done this assignment a few other times. So now that I've saved the drawing we're going to turn that in in D2L and so we're going to minimize that and then in D2L what we're going to do is we're going to go to the assignments area and then we're going to go to our module 2 assignment. And I believe we are in the module 2 if I double check it. Yeah. Module 2 is our floor plan drawing so we come back up here to our assignments. Module 2 I can select it. Now if I view this I have to go in as a student Assignments, Module 2. Here's how you will be graded. You'll be graded on completeness, accuracy, proper rules like layers and line types, proper dimensioning, proper CAD features. And so there's 30 points total. Add the file. Go to our downloads where I saved it. Add it. And then if you have a note, you can add a note here. We can submit it. And it will tell you that your file has been successfully submitted. And you can submit over and over. You can have more than one. Uh, but you can't take them out once you put them in. 
that you would need instructor rights. And so you have the ability to write, but you don't have the ability to erase. But that's all right. If you make a mistake and you say, hey, I updated something, just in turn, just put it in to the resubmit it and then just put a note saying I updated the drawing. I, I forgot to put my name on it or something like that. Alrighty, back to the main splash page. And this completes module two architectural exercise.